to Guitar Goddess Radio with Azina, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hey there, this is Zena here with Guitar Goddess Radio, and you are in for a treat today. We have a very special guest in the studio. We have the amazing Brianna Alexis. Brianna is a professional guitar player and songwriter based in Los Angeles, and her musical journey began when she started studying guitar with the late jazz guitarist Ted Green. Welcome to the show, Brianna. Hi. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, thank you. We're so excited to have you. You know, Brianna and I kind of go way back. She was on our very first Guitar Goddess Awards yes. when we started seven years ago. Oh my gosh! Right? I know. I was thinking about that. <laughs> I was when I was I was dating it. Okay, I'm dating back. I'm like seven years. How could that be? I know. Yeah. Like time just flies. And that was a blast. Oh my gosh, we had so much fun yeah. at the Gibson showroom. That was. I love that place anyway. It's I, my home away from home. Right? Yeah. So yeah, they're amazing. And they're so f they're family. It's very intimate there, and it was a perfect place for the opening. The purple carpet. I, wasn't that yeah. fun? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so in love with yeah. the purple carpet. Yeah. Like we're gonna do that again right. when we have the oh, Guitar Goddess so. Awards. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, next year. So Exciting. I'm really, really excited yeah. to to get that going. And you know what a pleasure to have Tish there from Daisy Rock yeah. Guitars. I mean. My goodness, that woman's such a trailblazer she and is. designing guitars yeah. and just all the women that she's introduced yeah. guitar to, um, you know, by de developing her yeah. line. Yeah. So that was incredible as well. Yeah, and I love the fact that she's um, she's grown in her journey, starting out as a punk bassist and mm -hmm. uh, just knowing guitars, knowing business, being a musician. Um, you have to respect all levels of where she comes from. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why we couldn't start. Triple threat. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We couldn't start Guitar Goddess without yeah. like yeah. honoring her right. first. Right? right? Like she's like the mama yeah. of the movement. <laughs> 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 but she's really incredible. What I want to talk about you and your journey. Like let's just talk about, you know, how you got started. You know, you have just a plethora of information to share with us. And, you know, you started with jazz with the late Ted Green and you have done everything. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you got started you know from playing jazz going yeah. all the way to rock to yeah. doing you know movie soundtracks yeah. and you know putting together bands and everything just tell us a bit about how you got that going <laughs> a lot of years <laughs> now I'm aging myself um, I started I actually started playing um, I actually started playing rock but quickly moved to jazz once I was under instruction by my da jazz teacher and he just turned me on to a whole other world. So that developed really quickly, like I went into that. Um, but you know, I mean, I started with uh, um, on the Sunset Strip doing um, playing metal with a lot of the hair bands in the 80s and I had an all girl band, I had a couple, I was in a lot of all girl bands back then. Um, and that was, you know, part. I always had one foot out. I had my love for what it was, I was young, it was exciting. I mean, the Sunset Strip during that time was, you could barely look down the strip and all you saw was hair. You liter <laughs> literally, from like, at that time, Gazaris to down to the whiskey, and there was, you know, the rainbow and all the clubs in between, and you literally had to drive about, you know, three to five miles. Basically, if you drove the strip, you were just cruising, because yeah. that's what you wanted to do is see your friends along the boulevard. Um, and that was really exciting for somebody, you know, young, up-and-coming guitar players and lots of boys and you know um <laughs> although from the behind you couldn't really tell if it was a boy or a girl <laughs> <laughs> but the other side of me the orange county side and the side that of the student um i i kept wanting to keep pushing keep growing and um and um a guitarist by the name of jeff thomas um, turned me on to jazz and from then it was just my love so you know i try to incorporate some of that <laughs> in metal and it's just the only thing you can do is play as fast as you can and put on distortion and try and take it from metal, but it didn't, wasn't happening. <laughs> 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 I got sought after really quickly. Um, you know, and I still, I still play it. I love it, you know. That's my roots. Um, but jazz has my heart. Yeah. Jazz and fusion has my heart. Um, so, uh, gosh, now I lost track of your question. Um, <laughs> How did I get started? Yeah. 
Um, so on the business end, as any musician knows up and coming, you also have to have a job. Um, and you have to pay the rent. So um, I lived very close to Randall Amplifiers at that time. And um, I just knocked on the door. I just thought that'd be a cool place to work. What? And I just This was a day where it was not online. Yeah. And you actually, they saw your resume. You could hand it. <laughs> and I, in Randall at that time, Don Randall, a lot of people don't know, but Don Randall was in, I think, World War II with Leo Fender. And Leo Fender was the engineer and Don Randall was the businessman. And I keep this man's wow. name alive because it was so monumental in my journey. And a lot of people don't know the history of Randall Amplifiers. I mean, Leo Fender and him were partners. Um, so I just, it was right place, right time. I knocked on the door. It was very mom and pop run. And it was, they have everything there from, you know, production to distribution. And, um, and I worked for, I worked for Don Randall. I worked for the president. And, um, I, uh, at that time, Bill Acton, who just retired from Gretsch yeah. and has been working all these years wow. as a r <laughs> director, he sort of also took me under his wing. So I learned how to do a r So that was really pivotal because, you know, even back then I learned about branding mm -hmm. and I learned about artist relations and that's why I have endorsements and I just sort of know the business end mm -hmm. as well as being um, a guitarist because even early on back then before we had social media, I knew that I had to, I had to know both sides. I had to Absolutely. know, you know, you have to know about the record label at that time, record labels, um, publishing, <laughs> licensing, manufacturing, endorsements, because then you actually got paid for endorsements and you could, you know, be sponsored and things like that. It's changed over the years a little bit, I just think because of the demand. But um, so, so that was really an important part in my development. Um, at lunchtime, I'd go back on the amplifiers um, for shipping, and I would practice. I'd put my headphones on, I'd plug into a Walkman, wow. and I would practice during my lunch hours and um, socialize with all the people that worked there that were all musicians, mm -hmm. and just, um, you know, hung out with players and, and learned both sides. Um, I love that. I love that so much because what I hear a lot of when I talk to a lot of up-and-coming guitarist is you know yeah I'm playing I'm practicing and you know I'm playing out but you don't hear a lot about the music end, or yeah. th I'm sorry the business, business end, end and the it. business end is so important yeah. you know it's really important for you to get out there and to market yourself right. and to understand how to work with right. these companies right because they want somebody they want to know that you're you're um, also going to be dependable to show up absolutely and you know even then I knew I mean I never really and it was sort of um, more uncool and more square because I, I never um, really partied, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I didn't. It was, I took it too seriously. No, you um, didn't. You were rocking. No, I, mean, I, mean, I looked like I, I looked, I looked like I was a badass, but I really was, <laughs> you know? But how I many would, people do we meet? And, you know, you really find out about their life behind the scenes, and it's like, I wasn't really partying, you know? I was practicing, and I was working, and I was networking, you know? It's not yeah. always sex, drugs, and rock and roll like we think it is. No, but I think that takes, mad. I mean, anybody that that is under the influence and, and playing and soloing, I mean, I think that takes mad skills because I could never do that. I'm like, there's no way. I, I'd forget my parts I'm like you know <laughs> and I think the reality is is there is an image that you have to sort of keep up in that world a little bit you couldn't party that hard and still tour right I mean you know even even young I mean you know youth does take you a long way but at the same time I'm like there's you know you're doing 90 minute sets and mm -hmm. you're on the road and mm -hmm. uh, you know especially being female what if I forget my products and all right <laughs> right <laughs> I'm like we, we got that on top of it right so um yeah so and I was always the band leader Okay. So I just had to be responsible for signing the contracts, mm -hmm. you know, making sure everything was taken care of, that even promotions was taken care of, um, flyers. Right. You know, back right. then we just used to, you know, you make 100 flyers and you post flyers everywhere. Exactly. Everywhere you go, you know, yeah. you, you have postcards, everybody you, you meet, my show, you know. <laughs> Saturday night before you go and hand out, you go on the Sunset Strips. I can't even tell you how many times I did that. And you just hand out, hand out flyers to everybody. Wow. Well, that's what you did. That's exactly how it rolled, you know, and, and the younger uh, players, they have no concept of that no. because they go and they pay, post on Facebook, yeah. you know, an right. event on yeah. on Facebook, and uh, they send out a few Instagrams and a few tweets, right. and then they're like, why is no one here? Yeah. <laughs> and well, also, well, actually, that goes probably further, uh, you know, yeah. than 
trying to personally (laughs) (laughs) push your flyer to everybody. (laughs) Um, But back then, the one thing that there was was a lot of support. You you know, a lot of people, I think, knew the local bands, Mm -hmm. and and there was that networking. It was the word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. um, yeah, and, uh, and and then after Randall, I um, they sold Randall to Casio Keyboards, and um, Don called up Leo Fender and said, you know, hey, give this girl a job. So um, I got a job in research and development in the amplifiers uh, at Fender, based on a phone call. Um, after I, I worked at Randall for like two years, and then I worked at Fender and R and D and got to know those engineers. Um, and they let me solder circuit boards and no. do all the, yeah, yeah, wow. and do all that fun stuff. This was in Brea over, well, Fullerton, I guess, um, technically where their, where their headquarters were. And, um, and I was there for two years before I decided to move to LA to go to music school. Yeah. Wow. What an incredible background you come from. Like, you know, usually it's like, oh yeah, I played and I did a whole bunch of bands. You're like, no, I did business. I took care of business first. I had to pay for those amps. I was right? like, I'm a gear freak. I'm, right. I'm like you know they didn't give us that stuff mm-hmm. and you know it'd be like half off but i still you know <laughs> I, I had to pay for it right. i mean that was more important than clothes or anything else or rent so i'm like um and and actually to move i had so much gear i had acquired so much gear to move to la i had to sell my gear wow. because i i got it for half off mm-hmm. so then i had to sell it in order to get an apartment and to move to la and um you know I, so i i sold a lot of you know, big, huge, four twelve amplifiers. Oh my gosh! Seriously, I had I had um, eight cabinets, eight oh four twelve God. cabinets, <laughs> and four heads because they stacked up like right, a wall right, behind right, me, right? Right, right, right. And um, I've had dummy cabinets. I had cabinets that were were you know had nothing in them, but the lights turned on just for my wall of, you know, wall of amplifiers yeah. on the stage, um, and that was my pyrotechnics. I love that. I love that so much. Now, what did your parents think of this? Like, I just got to go back there. Like, so supportive. Really? And the reason being is because, um, I mean, we did photo shoots. We would, in our garage, Mm -hmm. with, you know, black paper bags up, you know, to make it look like a backdrop. And and just my mom was my first roadie. She would work all day and then, you know, drive to L.A. and, and carry my gear for me. So supportive. Um, and I think so because um, I was so focused and she'd seen me practicing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and like I said, I didn't party. So she yeah. knew that I had my head on my shoulders. You know, and I think with that, and I come from a musical background. My father mm-hmm. was a, a concert pianist. Okay. Um, so I think that was just always in the genes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, my band would, would stay over at my house. We'd do <laughs> rehearsals there. I think they'd rather, uh, parents rather have you at absolutely yes and seeing what you're doing Mm -hmm. and feeding us and uh rather than having you go somewhere else absolutely yeah oh that's really cool that's really really cool i I mean i don't think without her support and my mom is a warrior herself i mean i i I couldn't have done anything i i've done without her complete support so um what a blessing yeah it's such a blessing you know it's very challenging for kids who are really into music and to have that disconnect with the parents where they really don't understand you know why you're banging and making all this noise in the garage (laughs) and why you have a house full of kids you know all jumping around and playing instruments you know so you were really blessed and how wonderful that your parents were so supportive and and that your house was the place to be (laughs) it was it was you know and it's um so because it was an open door yeah and um and and, you know music is you know it's it it helped me in every area of um studying you know Mm -hmm. and academics Mm -hmm. because just the memorization numbers reading you're reading another language yes you're learning about the theory um you know and studying jazz uh, to me i mean the people that i was hanging out with were, were were so um I mean, just amazing human beings, amazing, mm-hmm. just just prodigies. Absolutely, I was so lucky, and, and you know, I was always the um, the worst musician in the group, and that's sort of where you want to be. That's the best place to yeah. be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was always embarrassed, thinking, "Oh my God, why are these people hanging out yeah, with me?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> But I'm th- I'm uh, there with you. They <laughs> saw the effort. Yes. And they saw that it was sincere, and and that I gave 110 percent. And so um, I think, in a male world, especially mm-hmm. in jazz. I was accepted, um, you know, uh, and my school was like a mini Berkeley. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to Dick Grove School of Music, 
It was only around for 13 years. Okay. Um, and it, um, Dick Grove used to play with all the, all, all the, um, I, I want to say Johnny Carson, but I may be incorrect with that. But it's when they had live bands mm -hmm. and they had big bands. And so he comes from that school um, and sort of created his own theory of, of teaching and turned into this, to this phenomenal jazz school. But I think the timing was just off. Mm -hmm. You know, this was, you know, mid 80s to 90s. And it was around for 13 years and you're competing against MI yeah. during, you know, heavy metal era. Um, so, but, um, you know, but the Steve Lukather's and Scott Henderson's mm -hmm. and Mike Stearns, they all came as guest teachers and, oh, wow. um, you know, shared that bond, mm -hmm. so. That's um, beautiful. Yeah, so, and, and that was another pivotal life in my musical career, I know. I, I want to talk about something that you and I share in common, which is left-handed guitars. Yes, <laughs> yes. My Southpaw sister. Yes, Southpaw sisters yes. forever. Yes. Um, you know, that it was love at first sight when I met you, and I was like, oh, my God, she plays left-handed like me. I, you know, you're a freak, too. I love it. Tell me about your journey um, as a left-handed uh. guitarist. Let's just talk about that because... First of all, I want to say to all the music stores out there, you got to have more than one in your inventory because there's more than one of us that play left-handed. Yeah. And please I'm make getting, one. I'm getting chills. <laughs> I literally, like, I'm getting chills. First of all, I'm talking to a lefty. Second of yes. all, it's, it's gear. It's gear. Um, yeah, we're going to go, yeah, go, 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 okay. go there. We're going to go there with the gear. <laughs> but, yeah, let's, let's talk about your journey as a left-handed uh, guitarist. Did you start? Yes. You started lefty. I could not do it. I'm not ambidextrous. Okay. Okay. I do, uh, you know, and which which is so bizarre to me. When I first started playing, um, uh, I, you know, because people bat left or right or mm -hmm, whatever, mm -hmm. and to me it was crazy because this felt natural, but then I don't do anything with this hand. Right. And this is the hand that's like, you know, you're moving. So to me that was so, that's still so bizarre to me because <laughs> this hand is so fluent with guitar playing, but I guess it's just that rhythm hand. Um, but uh, yeah, at that time I couldn't afford, and there wasn't even left-handed guitars, mm -hmm. so everything was flipped upside down. Yeah. And of course, I would pick things that were universal with the cutaway. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, the Flying V. Flying V. Yeah. Flying V. Um, I had an SG cutaway, same side, and then I had an Aria Strat that was actually given to me from a friend. So I kept that, but that was very uncomfortable because. I didn't even I couldn't even afford to have the electronics moved. Mm, mm -hmm. So I'm up here wow. and and Girl. your arms up here so it would turn the volume off. Yeah. <laughs> All these things. Uh. So what I would do, my guitar, I crazy glued the volume up before knowing at that time that you know, I'll just let it hum and yeah, feed yeah, back right, and right, just right, go right, to my right. Amp yeah, the amp and or fix put it. my hand on the strings because I didn't I you know these are just the crazy embarrassing <laughs> stories that you guys tell. It's not embarrassing. <laughs> you know, this is why it was so important we have to tell these stories yeah. because, you know, even though there are more left-handed guitars now, they're still yeah. custom. Every guitar I have, I have 22. They're yeah. all custom. Yeah, yeah. They're, and they're expensive. <laughs> they're and the expensive, ones you want, yes. you know, um, there's a place, I think, in Texas, it's Southpaw Guitars. Yep. Um, and they have huge variety. Um, but, you know, all the awesome guitars, the Gibsons and the, the Fenders, and, I mean, that's that's – that's what I always go to is um, they're pricey, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I mean, I have about 15 guitars that I've had over the years. And and I still have my three original flipped. Um, you the do? Rest, yeah. Oh, oh I awesome. have my pink flying V. Oh, the, that pink flying V yeah. is amazing. <laughs> like, I must see <laughs> I that and I must it. play that it. That was custom, actually. Really? Um, okay. I, that was my first totally custom. I had an Erickson neck. He was a, a Luther from Garden Grove. Okay. Uh, he may still be around. It had, like, a Jackson headstock. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the body was a custom body. It was smaller in size because of the, the weight. And it had a pearl, pink pearl finish. And it has one of the original black Floyd Rose and there wasn't a lot of the original ones that were in I think the black ones just came out the black hardware right um those just and so it has has all that original I had an EMG pickups oh had just came out the yeah. the um pickups had just come out and I had those and it's it's super high gain <laughs> and it feeds back <laughs> all over but I played so many shows on the strip <laughs> with that guitar <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it looks amazing. I've, I did a lot of photo shoots with it too. Right. I mean, I, yeah, I've had with behind my stacks of amplifiers. So, um, no, that's an awesome guitar. 
That's a really cool. I forgot. Yeah, we could. I, I got to look at your collection. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I have like 22 guitars, <gasps> and they're all custom. Every one is oh, custom. Wow. Oh. They're all custom. It's ridiculous. Wow. You know, you're like, I want this guitar. So what was your first guitar? My first guitar was a Fender Stratocaster, oh. and it was a Mexican Fender oh, Stratocaster okay. back when those weren't cool. Right, right, right. You know? <laughs> Is it, was it a righty? It was a righty. So you flipped it. I flipped it. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it sounded terrible. Yeah. It never <laughs> stayed in tune. I would play it. It would be in tune for like a minute. <gasps> right. And then it would sound awful, you know, and I need feedback as well. And I'm just like, this is not happening. Right. So instead of getting a new car, <laughs> I saved and got a guitar. I was just going to say, how did you swing that back then? Because right. I mean, that was right. a lot of money. Yeah, it was a car. Wow. It was a car. So instead of having a car, wow. I had a guitar. Wow. But, you know, those are the things that you do when you're a left-handed guitarist. Yeah. Yeah. You know, otherwise, you know, you're, you're sounding terrible yeah. and... and uh, you know, or you're just faking it. You're right. like, okay, let me turn it down and then turn it up yeah. and turn it. You know, you're yeah. doing all these theatrics on stage right. trying to make this thing <laughs> sound good when yeah. really it should just go in the heap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that guitar, though. Like, Do you um, still have it? I don't have it anymore. Oh, okay. I was able to sell it. I, I spent a lot of money fixing it to get it to sound right. good. Right. And then I sold it. Oh, my God. But you know how that goes. Yeah. You know, you have all this gear and uh you know you just traded you, you tra traded you traded back then you absolutely know, um before craigslist yes. there was a recycler absolutely you got it you <laughs> and got i'm it. from orange county so it was yeah. orange county recycler that that's you know buy and sell and trade and and uh a couple things i hold on to but but you know that's what you had to do i still have a seymour yeah. duncan amplifier oh that's cool oh my god it's <laughs> like a pedal board and an amplifier <laughs> all in one say. like it's incredible <laughs> Those and are those. That's that's those are my peeps. Yeah, yeah. Ka Kathy Duncan and Seymour. Kathy Duncan. Yeah. There you go. They're, so they're one of my endorsees, and I am a proud artist of Seymour Duncan. Great company. Yeah. Great, great, great company. people. Absolutely. Santa Barbara. Yes. Just, you know, solid as a rock. You know, we're so lucky here in California. We have so many manufacturers. The resources. Yeah. They're just. Although they're moving out. I know. But uh, you know, um, but a lot of them are still here, and. Um, you know, I was sad to see my Fender family move to Arizona. Yes. But I'm still, I see them every year now. Yeah. I still see my engineers. Bobby D, got to throw, throw a, <laughs> <laughs> a shout out. <laughs> shout out to Bob, thank you, <laughs> to Bobby D. He, he was an engineer that I've known all these years, and uh, a lot of them are just now retiring. But, um, uh, yeah, so, uh, but they still have their guitar factory in Corona, mm -hmm. their custom shop there. Um, but, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of people are moving, so. You know, it's it's the nature of the beast. You but know, we are lucky. We are in the capital of we are Guitar Haven, and, absolutely. And all the resources. You oh know, oh my gosh, the pedals alone. Like, talk to me about your setup. What you using right now? What's the new pedal board? <laughs> you know, what? I got a dust. I, I have to really d to to reprogram myself because when I get absorbed in one project, like I just redid my whole home studio. Okay. I just upgraded everything. So now my pedal board has been. Everything's all dusty, so I put it in its in its case, its Pelican case, and now oh, I have okay. to visually see what I have on this layout because I I revamped it about a year ago. Um, so my setup, I I run pretty clean from my um, I have a uh, I have two Fender um, Hot Rod Deluxe um, Custom. I run them stereo, mm -hmm. and I run them clean. Well, just a little little distortion, and then I have a Maxim distortion pedal, which I love. Just just um, it's it's a phenomenal pedal. I have a, um, um, oh gosh, I'm, I need to visualize this in my head. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so many, like, tell and me I your favorite, I've favorites. I've them out, my favorite favorites. Your, your favorite um, pedals. That Maxim is my favorite. Um, I had a Bogner, oh, the red, Bogner, love. the red, yes, um, yes. one before that. I can't even, I'm just like, I'm, I'm visualizing <laughs> what I have in my cabinet here. Um, just because I have a lot of, um, Oh gosh, I, I can't. I'm not even. Can we come back to that? We can we'll come, come back we'll come to come that. Back to we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. My favorite pedal is the Robotalk. I am oh, yeah, so yeah. in yeah. love with that pedal. Yeah. Like I'm just like I will never get rid of that thing. <laughs> it was stolen. Like I was on a gig. You know how that yeah. happens. Your stuff gets. It grows legs and walks away, and you're like, okay, oh my gosh. But I had to get another one because I'm like, I love that pedal so much, yeah. especially through a diesel amp. I'm just like. Yeah. Ah! Oh, you're you know, a diesel girl. I'm a diesel girl. Yeah. I love yeah. those. That's amps. a lot of power. It is a lot of power. That's but when I'm amp. rocking out, you know, yeah. I really want that power. Right, right. 
but uh, but yeah, so that's yeah. Th- those are my main things that I'm loving right now. Yeah. I love the orange amps as yes, well. Yes, okay. And uh, what what amps? I, I see you still have. I was uh, checking out your uh, your gear. You still have a lot of amps, girl. I have a lot of amps. Um, the one that I'm I'm using now. Um, I, I I sort of revamped everything. I'm um, my good friend Scott Henderson, jazz um, jazz fusion guitarist legend. <laughs> mm-hmm. He uh, he sat down with me. And we went over all of my stuff. I was so unhappy. I had come out of a gig, and I was just crying. I was so unhappy with the way everything was going. So we went through my whole system. We went through a rehearsal studio, went through everything. And I I basically mimicked what I bought everything he had. (laughs) (laughs) Um, He turned me on to Sir, John Sir, um, and Sir Guitars and Sir Amplifiers. Um, And I'm playing right now a custom audio head, which is designed by Sir and Bradshaw. It's sort of, I think, a a combination of of one of their amplifiers um, sold through Sir. And um, it's a 100-watt head. And so that's what I use for for the big. It's more power than Mm -hmm. I'll ever need. (laughs) Um, And I actually, for recording, I use that through a box. And then I, I um, I use simulated cabinets just because I'm in my place, it's not like I can, I'm mean, not in the studio, I can bl- blast cabinets. So everything is done through my computer. Okay. So um, that is my studio setup. And okay. then my live setup, I use my Fender Hot Rod Deluxe in stereo. Nice. So I use that um, through, and that's, again, those little guys, you know, on, on like one or two is fine. Oh, for yeah, any that's good. Gig. Oh, yeah. Really <laughs> yeah. For sure. And for then sure. I have an old modded Laney um, that's, you know, it's the sound of the 80s metal, and that mm-hmm. that's an awesome amp. Um, and then I was playing Carbon for a while, V3. Um, I don't know what else do I have. <laughs> you have ha- a lot of gear. Have, yeah, yeah, I have a lot of gear. So a lot of guitars, a lot of pedals. Like, I'm just thinking about what I have now because I swap things, too. Mm-hmm. So, But that's that's pretty much my current setup. Cool, yeah. cool. That's that's good, good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Now, what do you think, like, coming from kind of the old school, what do you think about these new pedals that are coming out where you can program them into your iPod and, you know, run it that way through your amp? I, you know, I'm, I'm old school. Yeah. I don't do it. Even it came, it took a long time for me to even open, open up to plugins. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I was doing a lot of comparing, mm-hmm. um, going back and forth, EQing. Does it sound like that? Does it sound like the lexicon? You know, like I, so... For me, I'm still. I don't. I do that for. Um, I do that for practicing, but not mm-hmm. so much recording. And I know there's amazing sounds, and people can get. You know, I mean, I, I look at some of the stuff, and uh, my friends record on, and and they'll tell me what they played on, and I was like, yeah. "You're kidding!" <laughs> like I, I, like my ears, and I think when you know it and yeah. you see it, you think, "Oh no, it doesn't sound like that." But if you just hear it, mm-hmm. um, it's amazing what like the apps and things that you can do but i can't say that there's one sort of online one that okay. i that i use i i do use the pandora mm-hmm. little yep, box to yep. practice right um and i plug that into my laptop and that's more for being on the road and touring um for convenience but i don't record with it but okay. my friends have yeah yeah you it's know. just interesting. It's just interesting because as the I- the industry keeps changing, I know it keeps going digital. It does. I know it does. And and I'm I like to physically. I just I'm with you. And I'm concerned. I'm I get concerned about power. Mm-hmm. Um, what if you know? I always think about Plan B. Yes. Um, because I'm usually my own roadie, mm-hmm. um, for the most part. And even if I do have a roadie, I still want to know what's going up. Go- what's going on with my signal flow? Because if something goes wrong or even the club has weird power, yes. gain issues, right. I got to go for plan B, plan C, which is usually a piece of hardware. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's so true. So. It's so true. You know, it, that's the thing. When you're used to touring and things, you always got to have a plan A, B, and C yes. because, you know, at the end of the day, you are in control. You're yeah. in charge. Yeah. And especially being a chick, I feel yeah. like you're even it's more, more so. <laughs> it's more pressure. Absolutely. Yeah. It's and far if I more get pressure. any feedback, it's like uh, I mean, everybody, it happens to everybody. Right, right. You know, you can't completely control it. I mean, I'm, I, uh, you know, I haven't been on the huge tours where I get, got the whole crew, mm-hmm. you know, where that, that can, you know, be avoided. But, um, you know, you, you just have to be able to know all your stuff, you know. Absolutely. And so, fix it all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. gosh. I have a whole, I have a whole <laughs> setup in my kitchen. My kitchen is basically my workspace. I, I have it. one of these gigantic, um, it's, it's a Husky 
uh, like a toolbox. Yep, yep, and all yep. My, with my the pedals are in and it. all that I stuff. I have tools in yep, it. Yep. I have a soldering iron for, <laughs> although I'm told by my friend not to solder ever, ever again, <laughs> because I soldered a, uh, a speaker cable and I blew up my my head. Oh my gosh. Because I didn't do the, the solders. Oh you know, gosh. I went, I'm like, I can do this. I yeah, need to yeah. supply and I got the quarter inch jack. I got all the jacks. I got the good cabling and my soldering was so atrocious. <laughs> Oh my I was I was like, look what I did. It was like big All blobs mangled. of solder, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you so. know, I give you credit for trying because I wouldn't even try. At that point, I'd be like, help me. I can solder <laughs> pickups. I can swap yeah. out pickups. Yeah. But I cannot, and I'm told not to do cables. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, we touched briefly on guitars, but what are you playing right now? Guitar, I, you know... This I know. Question I know. Is asked, and it's a touchy question it as is far touchy. as manufacturers because I have my loyalty. But at the same time, it's to me, it's like trying to pick. How can you pick one sound or one? You can't. I, I can't it's like shoes. I, that's I why just, you got to have. Went there. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you went there yeah. because I was going to say it's like having one pair. You can't. Exactly. You can't. Every one has a different tone. It's like a red dress, a blue dress, so on and so forth. You know, you my can't. husband asked me, why do you have 22 guitars? Right. Because they have they to match sound. what I'm wearing yeah. oh. and it has to have the tone also of what I'm playing. <laughs> you know, so so tell me about your coll- your favorites in your in your grouping of guitars. My favorite is my um, it's a it's it's a 68 um, Fender Strat, uh, and it is, it's actually modified from 1980, or not modified, it is a, um, a reissue from 1987. Okay. So it's, um, in that, when I worked at Fender, they uh-huh. had just put out these guitars. I can't believe you worked at Fender, like seriously? <laughs> like, I want to come back as you next well, time. And, and <laughs> our R&D was awesome, because yeah. that's research and development. Right, so right, right. You know, I'll, I'll tell you a story about one of the amplifiers when I left but um but it, that was just another awesome it was just meant to be right yeah, place right time absolutely you know and then that's what part of this industry is it is but um but at that time so they had just launched in 1987 um these these um, 68 reissue Fender Strats and so I got that and it you know it's it's just been my favorite I, I constantly am having it worked on I've had it refretted I've had it modified with uh, it has Seymour Duncan pickups in it um, and I love that guitar. It's just a mm-hmm. ma- it has a maple neck, so that's that's my favorite. Now I'm back to it, especially playing jazz and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, it just sounds right, and it's quiet. Um, and of course, my Gibsons. I love Gibson, Ugh, and they're um, amazing. you know. But um, my only <laughs> issue is the weight. Yes. You know, I have minor modified. It's called my uh, my gold top is my Franken Gibson because <laughs> it's completely <laughs> modified, and I I love. Um, I love the guitars. I like to have a whammy. Mm-hmm. So, um, but it's not hollowed out. It's a solid body and it weighs a ton. Yeah. And that has a um, that has a Fu Floyd um, bridge on it. Okay. Uh, which is like a Floyd Rose, but it's manufactured by Fu Tone. Um, and uh, and I mean, I go back and forth. I'm also uh, now really interested in Sir guitars mm-hmm. um, because those are just beautiful guitars. But my problem is. There's not a left-handed one I can try, right? So that I can get a feel <laughs> for it. <laughs> now I've learned my ways of how to flip it upside down, yes. and fe- I can not play right-handed, mm-hmm. but I can feel it, yeah. and I can get a feel for the action and how it, you know, how it sits, and and I can I can play one string, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Could you, are you ambidextrous? I am, okay, I am, but so I can't I can't play oh right-handed. You can't. Okay. Oh, girl, no! I sound <laughs> horrible. I sound like you know a four-year-old who just yeah, you know it I just doesn't work. I, I figure I and my goal was always okay. Let me do one song right hand or uh-huh. one lick so yeah. I can just sort of do a flashy yeah, thing. Yeah. Or just when I want to try guitar, uh-huh. I I can't. I can't either. Forget you about know, it. You know, one other thing is my nails. Um, I use my acrylics mm-hmm. for picking, mm-hmm. and I use this a lot in picking. So, you know, it's not like I do have a little bit of length there. Yeah. And so if I go this way, I can't even, you know, and this is always my set is I have my short nubs mm-hmm. and then this, and I, I use it, you know, so I, I can't do that. <laughs> it's so funny, like all these little tips and But it is hard for me to, I mean, if I, if I had access to more left-handed guitars, I may have more variety with my selection, but... I love my Fenders and I love my Gibsons, um, and um, I love both families. Yeah, they're great companies and they great make people great and they've absolutely. O- they've been good to me, um, and I like the sound of both the guitars. So um, 
yeah so so I haven't veered too much off of that like I've never even I've never played you know and I've Nez I've never played a Paul Reed Smith I've never That's played what I play yeah and, and those are lovely guitars they are I, it, I had to switch from the Gibson I love Gibson but I had to switch from the Gibson to the Paul Reed Smith live because yeah. of the weight oh yeah, yeah because of the weight it's much lighter uh -huh. but for recording I love the Gibson right. like you just can't get away yeah. from it yeah you know it just has yeah. a, a beautiful clean right. tone and you know I don't know wh how they make those guitars just sound so luscious, yeah. <laughs> but I love them. It's the wood. It's the run it of the is. It's the run of the wood. It's yes. the year. Yep. Um, you know, uh, it, all those uh, the electronics, um, everything that goes into them. It, um, you know, it's amazing how even a year or a run makes a big difference. It does. It's so true. You know? It's so true. You know, and I want to switch back to business for just a little bit. You know, a lot of our listeners are interested in getting endorsement deals. I think that's probably the number one question. Well, oh, no I problem. have three questions yeah. for you, and they're ones that I get all the time in okay. the email. Number one is people always want to know how they get endorsement deals. Right. You know, and, and I think that people have a misconception about what it means to have yeah. an endorsement deal. Yes. So can you speak a little bit yeah. about that? Um, it's not as, it, it's a huge honor, first yes, of all. Absolutely. It's not as glamorous as some, when people think endorsements like Nike and all the sports, mm -hmm. it's not like that. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of my professional players that can't afford to buy, uh, or that can't really, um, well, things can be tight, depending on if they're on tour or off tour. Um, some of the some of the manufacturers that they play for, um, they, they buy them, and they're endorsed by them, but they buy them. They buy them at a discount, mm -hmm. but they support the manufacturer. Um, I do a lot of that myself. So it's not a full deal. Um, I mean, yes, I've been given equipment, mm -hmm. but um, usually I also want to support my manufacturer. So um, in order to, well, like my first deals, you know, I, I, I packaged myself professionally in, in the sense of I had my CD, I had done enough playing out. Um, we had label interest at that time we weren't signed early on when now it's, it's done differently i'll go to what i did and what i do now um and um and just had enough buzz mm -hmm. i mean a lot of manufacturers want their where is their product going to be seen yes so for them it has to be also an equal deal on the sense of you're playing our product so how are you going to represent it where is it going to be exposed or um you know talk about it wherever you're being interviewed um just get the maximum exposure for their product you know and also they they could be artists um depending on the type of music what kind of how it represents them mm -hmm. you know they also may choose their artists that way as well choose a manufacturer that also represents your music and you um i mean that's what i did back in the day now a lot of times it's you know well it is it comes down to exposure I think and credibility, um, what you're doing and how long you've been playing, and you just you you approach them and find out what their deal is. How do I get represented? Um, and uh, don't expect a lot of freebies, <laughs> you know. And don't expect necessarily don't expect to be paid because I think you're going in with the wrong expectations of why you really want to be sponsored by that product. Um, also, volunteer um, doing clinics representing the product at NAM and trade shows um, and then get footage of that um, showing or do demos of it. If you already have one piece of their equipment, do a demo on it, get it up on YouTube, get hits. Um, those are my suggestions. Those are great. Thank you so much. You know, that's a question that comes through a lot, yeah. you know, because people see, oh, you're endorsed by these companies and they don't really understand what it, yeah. what that means. Yeah. You know, that doesn't mean necessarily that they're shipping me a guitar every week. That would be amazing. And if you want to do it, I can give you my address. But in the <laughs> meantime, <laughs> and you're not being paid. I mean, you're not necessarily people you're not it, being people paid. Do it do, they do it differently. Yes. But it is an honor to be endorsed. It's an absolute honor. Yeah. That, you know, that these even companies. They want to put you on your website. Absolutely. Like, when I go up on my manufacturer's website, I'm proud of that. Yes. I feel like that was a lot of, you know, that was a lot of years and, and um, of getting to that point. And even my first deals. Um, I had a little different circumstances because I started out doing A and R at Randall and and Fender, and I got I was in with the manufacturers, um, but I'm still not. It's not like I can go out there and say I'm I'm, I'm Fender, 
I mean, it's still not, they know me and they know that I'm out there, but there's also how many other hundreds artists, you know? Yes. I just have a long history of Fender. Yes. They're great people, you know. I've worked with them for quite a few years and they're incredible. Like mm -hmm. everything you need, like they have your back. Yeah. And I totally appreciate that. And I think that some of the artists coming up, you know, who just want an endorsement deal, yeah. you know, you really need to look at it as a partnership Yes. because it, it is a hundred percent a partnership. They're yeah. not only giving you gear free or at a discount in exchange, you're promoting them as well. And do you believe yeah. in the company's values and so on right. and so forth? And and right. Fender and Gibson, those are some fabulous yeah. companies. And uh, Taylor, Paul Reed Smith, I've yes. worked with. You've right. worked with Seymour Duncan. Yeah. You know, there's some great manufacturers out there, and they really take care of their artists. Yeah. But you have to come to the table yeah. with something that they want as right. well. Right. So thank you so much yeah. for that Absolutely. that advice, because that's really, really key. And uh, another question that a lot of people ask, and I want to give this question to you. See, you guys, you don't understand. Like when people come in, you get to hear it straight from <laughs> from from them as well. You know, and Brianna has so much experience, and you know, people always want to know, like, how do you get your music and films? Oh boy, <laughs> I mean, I'm still I'm still battling that, and you know, my projects like. Over the past couple of years, and um, well, actually, it's always been um, music production has always been a love, mm -hmm. um, and you know, a lot of times we can't. Okay, where's the money in music? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the labels are not what they used to be, and you go off tour and you're not playing. You know, the reality is we still need a job. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, over the years, I've been doing production and working for 20th Century Fox and Sony Pictures for years, the last like 20 years. And wherever there is an opportunity, sort of unrelated to to the, the studio, um, you know, I, I'm there, I have the connections, I'm networking, and that's where I'll, you know, submit my music for things. A lot of my stuff is more independent, and that's, that's sort of where you need to be to get your foot in the door, and there's a lot of work there. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, building your, your musical library, that's where it starts. Um, you know, learn recording, because that's where at all, music placement is where a lot of musicians uh, need to make, that's where you go pretty much to make money. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's building your library. It's being, um, being broad with your music, learning all other styles, because that's what it's gonna call for. They need some, need, uh, something uh, maybe called for like a, a country background or a pop background or things that are outside of your comfort zone. And even if you make something up that's like a, a minute or you know, 30 seconds, it's gonna be a bumper or something, it's just an idea to give the music supervisor an idea of what you sound like and what you can do. Um, you know, budget, you can control it by uh, doing your own productions. So if you learn how to do, you know, the recording of it, the mixing of it, there's no other person, mi no middleman. So it's just more for you. That's great. Now I'm going to circle back with that even deeper. You're talking <laughs> about music production. What are some basic things for people who are maybe just starting to set up a studio at home? What are some basic things that you would recommend that they start with? Uh, basic things is find out first of all your um, oh gosh let, let me let me try and uh, <laughs> these are music geeks a, we're all geeks so question. go there <laughs> a good computer first of all for sure um, and uh, learn your recording software either if it's Pro Tools Logic um, Digital Performer <clears throat> learn your platform and learn it well that's going to be the most important thing um, when I started out I talk to every one of my music producer music producers engineers and just um, and just took meetings and asked them all kinds of questions um, engineering questions I, I mean I'm still learning and we never stop because yeah, the software keeps upgrading right you and, know. and <laughs> just keeping yourself network and talking to people because you can reading manuals are great but they also can be overwhelming and not that interesting so there's a lot of forms out there um, recording engineering forms that you can, discussion forms that you can learn. Um, there's a lot of online classes. Um, I've taken a lot of those. Um, and staying networked within that industry. So that would be my biggest advice is 
the forms, online forms, because a lot of times it's also um, late hours. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, when you, when you are working, it's not like, oh, well, I can't do it during those hours. But the beauty of the Internet is that any time you can reach out to a form and ask these questions. Or you get stuck on a project and it's late night hours. I've done that numerous times. Um, YouTube is also a really great place to, um, to view master classes. Oh um, yeah, there's a lot of master classes, okay. or if you you can also subscribe to them. I think there's one. It's called masterclass.com, and it's guitar and a lot of audio, um, and it's really a good one. Oh, that's great. That's great to know. And I understand you're going to be coming out with some guitar, yeah, tutorials I'm as well. Them. Yeah, I'm doing them now. I okay. started do th doing them. Um, I did some teaching. Well, I've taught over the years. Um, and about four years ago, I substituted at UCLA. Mm -hmm. I was teaching guitar there. That was a big deal for me. Wow. Um, and from that, um, I did some master classes. And, um, and then I did some work for um, Dangerous Guitar, okay. which is an mm -hmm. online um, publication, a subscribed publication for guitar. And I have a home studio. I'm like, you know, why not? do these I love it you know I have I have a lot of um, you know uh, a lot of instructional stuff that I do for my students I figured why not just start doing a series of them I don't know yet if it's going to be a subscribed base or not I will definitely keep things I will keep us in the loop so we can I share will. with our, our listeners in our, our community but you know I want to get back to the music we've been talking a lot about gear and I, you guys know I'm a gearhead I like love 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 the gear so we went down that road because we can with <laughs> Rihanna it's a lot of fun but let's get back to the music you know when I first met you you and your band absinthe came yes. to guitar goddess when we launched uh, seven mm -hmm. years ago and we were honoring um, Trish from uh, guitar or from uh, Daisy Rock guitars, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because I feel like she is the mother of the female guitarist yeah. community, and that she brought us all together by bringing us some guitars. Uh, so you know, you perform with your band Absinthe, and I just want you to share a, a couple of the tracks with us today. Tell tell us what you. Um, I think we have dialed up. Um, we have. Let's see. Now this, your is a, now, this is a different lineup. This is Cherokee vocal. Oh, Cher Cherokee. Cherokee, okay. Cherokee Fortune on um, vocals. And Love she's her. sort of been, you know, with many female bands, you change over the years. Your style changes. Your lineup changes. Um, so the last three years of the band, um, Cherokee led the band. And that's sort of, I think, those years we came into our own. So okay. this is more bluesy driven. Cool. It's, there's a little bit of a metal edge there, a little bit of sort of punky sound. But I think the one you're... Is it filthy? You save, might save your breath. Oh, save your breath. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah. So that's save your so breath. So tell us about that song. Tell us what this, what it's all about, and then we'll get into it. <laughs> uh, that's that's the mind of Cherokee Fortune. She does the lyrics. All right. I write the music, and she does the lyrics. So I don't know what she was thinking. <laughs> she wrote that up. <laughs> I come up with a riff, and then you know. And then she takes. Yeah, it from and then there. she takes it from there. All right. Well, let's take a listen. Awesome. Wow. 
That was really incredible. There's a video of that online. Really? It's called Save Your Breath. I, I actually um, produced that and um, filmed it. We filmed it all over L.A. Oh, actually in the subway. Wow. In the metro subway. Really? Um, yeah. So we filmed it there, and um, so there's a video online. Oh, my gosh. We'll have to go and check that out. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to hear another track. So what do we have next? Pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. All right, here we go. <laughs> Great. What are you playing on this? This is playing as far as Gear. guitar. Yeah. Uh, that's my Gibson. Oh, of course. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> fat sound. Yeah, listen to this. This is great. by our guest Brianna Alexis and her band Absinthe. That was <laughs> rockin'. That has a really nice lineup on it. Those are, uh, we have Jen Oberly on bass, who's just an amazing session player, plays with everybody in town. Um, Lux on drums. We have Terry McCoy, who's also a co-writer at the song. Um, on she's Her and I, we were doing dual guitars at that time. <laughs> and led by Cherokee Fortune, who is an ultimate jam uh, regular on the Tuesday nights. That's incredible. I yeah. love it. I love, love, love mm, it. Thank you. Like, it's just it so much fun. fun to yeah. watch you perform live and, and to just hear the music as well. Where are you? Where can we see you next? What's happening? We have some stuff in the works, but okay. it's uh, it's uh, no dates are posted yet. Okay. So yeah, we're just uh, it's I mean that the stuff that we're listening to is a few years old. So we have a new sound. I think it's more bluesy rock driven. Um, and uh, coming into our own. Yeah. And so, and uh, Cherokee's been busy with her projects. I've been busy with my studio projects. Um, and so hopefully next year, hopefully next year we'll have some dates online, but nothing at the end of this year. Okay. Well, yeah. keep us. Maybe Nam. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Nam, we got Nam in January, fingers <laughs> right. crossed. Also, you know, keep us in mind, we are going to be taking the Guitar Goddess tour back out on the road next I year really so yes 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 so we'd yeah. love to to have absinthe yeah oh that would be awesome oh my god that'd be so that incredible be, maybe we'll kick it off with you guys right I like love that two left-handed yeah. guitarists like they're not gonna <laughs> we know can what do to a do collaboration right <laughs> yeah oh my gosh we're gonna have so much fun <laughs> that would be so much fun <laughs> well thank you so much for coming today so this has been so me. much thank fun you. it's so great to like 
catch up and hear everything uh, you've been working on and, and tell you. everybody how they can connect to you. They can reach me through my website, which is briannalexis.com. I'm also over uh, social media, um, Brianna Alexis Guitar, because there are other Brianna Alexis's. I saw uh, that. Yeah. How dare they? Yeah, how dare they, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and yeah, so Facebook, um, Twitter, and Instagram, Brianna Alexis Guitar. Brianna Alexis Guitar. That's how you guys can find her. Make sure yeah. you follow her, listen to her music. They have new projects they're working on right yeah. now yeah. and maybe a performance at NAM. Yeah, like look, I'm, we'll we're see. just going to put it out there. We're yeah. just going to put it out there. <laughs> NAM, we want to see Brianna and uh, and we'll Absent. Be my, <laughs> like 27th year there? No. Yeah. I used to wow. demo there for the for the guitar manufacturers I represented back in the day. That is incredible. So I know. I, you and know. you're so young. You started yeah. like yeah, when I you were well. like ten. <laughs> I hate to date myself, but you Don't. know what? Those were those were years earned. Yes, uh, and I'm proud of them. You know what? I I loved seeing your modeling photos too. Oh I was God. like, oh my gosh, she's done everything. <laughs> yeah. She's been a model. She's been you know R and D for guitar companies, <laughs> a jazz guitarist, a rock guitarist, oh. a composer for film and television. What haven't you done? Well, there's more to come. There's more to come. It's I'm not sure. over. I'm not sure. I'm sure. Fat lady sings, right? Right, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So you guys, you've been listening to Guitar Goddess with our very special guest today, Brianna Alexis. And we hope to see you guys back here same time next week for another episode of Guitar Goddess. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being Appreciate here. Oh. Only on LA Talk Radio. Sorry for being all over the map. <laughs>